Enchanted Tiki Talk is brought to you by Kingdom Strollers. Our premium stroller and crib rentals are delivered straight to your Disney or Orlando area resort. It couldn't be easier. Book yours at KingdomStrollers.com. And Mouse Pros. Let our travel specialists plan your next vacation. Our concierge level service gives you the perfect hassle-free vacation. Get your free quote from Sean or any of our magical agents at MousePros.com. And now, it's show time! Your attention, please. One show for you to see. One for you and everyone. Oh, look at all the people. Pay attention, it's show time. I am always ready, as you say, to put on the show. My goodness, you're all staring at us. We better start the show rolling. Wait, wait. We forgot to wake up the glee club. Aloha, come to the Tiki Room. Get your expialidocious tickets right here. Hello and welcome to Enchanted Tiki Talk Podcast. This is episode 279 for the week of April 11th, 2019. Back in the hut this week is myself, myself, and myself. So that's Hello, it. myself. Oh, look who else is here. I am here. Hey, now. Well, I didn't know you were here. I am here. I was just randomly talking. You called to me, so I figured, you know, uh, you should know I'm here. Uh, you I called. I, I I didn't know I called you. Yeah, I, it's a habit. Yeah, I just forgot. So what's going on? Um, it's not a whole lot. Oh, my mom and niece they just got back from uh, her girls' trip to Disney World, and um, I am now the proud owner of an uh, Orange Bird sipper cup. So. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, that thing is so cool. Yeah, I love that thing. Yeah, it's funny. They said the, the same thing, that the cup was better than the drink. <laughs> oh, they did? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I did not like the drink Yeah, they didn't just really care for it either. But I remember when I was walking um, through Epcot and I heard some a couple people drinking. like, wow, this is great. It's so tasty. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it is not. And they're old enough to drink too. So. Oh, yeah. So they should know better. I don't even think <laughs> alcohol could have saved the drink, to be honest. I didn't actually taste it. They said too that like it was just overly sweet, and it just it wasn't like what was expected. I guess I don't know, but right. So it's like I have the, the cup now, and I uh, I have a couple of uh, like rice crispy treats to snack on, and uh, and uh, and they'll be gone by the end of the recording. Uh, no, I think I'll save them for a treat for for Saturday. That's kind of my off day from you know the diet, working out, stuff like that. So I I, I tend to treat myself on Saturdays. So I got you. I get it. So with your mom going to Disney World, did it get the bug in you to want to go back? It did, just because of like. I followed their trip. I mean, uh, right. uh, I saw their, their photo pass pictures and stuff, and we were uh, texting back and forth all week, and I was, like, telling them stuff to stop here and here and here and stuff and do this and that and stuff. And um, my niece was so excited. She did the um, pick a pearl that's in um, World Showcase, um, and she actually got two pearls oh. in one shell. Yeah. Oh, nice double prizes yeah and stuff and so no it costs twice the amount of money to, to get it set well that's that's the thing of course that she got the uh earring settings because she got the two pearls right. so, yeah. and stuff like that so that's so cool. yeah it did it kind of like made me sad that like i wasn't there but then i i i enjoyed it through them so right. oh, that's good all right, so with that, let's take a little time here, take a break, and I'll send it over to Steve for the news. Hi, Steve from Disney Diary here. This is What's News. The final date for Illuminations, Reflections of Earth, has been announced, as well as a debut date for the new show, Epcot Forever. The current 14-minute long Illuminations debuted on October 1st, 1999 and will end after a 20-year run on September 30th. A new show, Epcot Forever, will debut October 1st, 2019. The new show will feature fireworks, lasers, and choreographed special effect kites. 
accompanied by a collection of songs that paints a picture of Epcot. The show will again change in late 2020. The long-awaited third parking garage at Disney Springs and its pedestrian bridge to the marketplace will open on April 16th. The Grapefruit Garage will have 3,000 spaces, and the pedestrian bridge will go over Buena Vista Drive to the area of the basin and the World of Disney Store. A new plant-based cuisine guide is now available at the Magic Kingdom. Guests looking for plant-based food and beverage options in the park can find this new tool at various locations. Uh, the, it'll be at all table service and quick service restaurants, all guest experience team podiums, and all guest relations. The guide will help identify items free from animal meat and common animal products that many vegetarians avoid, including milk, eggs, and honey. Walt Disney World Resorts are now charging a service fee for package and grocery delivery to your room by Bell Services. The $6 fee per package applies to items such as groceries, gift baskets, Amazon or Instant Cart deliveries. However, there is no charge if you pick up the package in the lobby. There is still no charge for luggage delivered to your room from the Disney Magical Express or if you store luggage while waiting for a room to become available. And finally, let's take a walk down Main Street USA at the Magic Kingdom and take a listen as they celebrate Mickey Mouse's birthday. Please visit us at DisneyDiary.com for the latest news. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Disney Diary. Now, back to the Tiki 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 Hut. Thank you, Steve, for the news. And we are back. So, this week on the episode, we are going to continue the series of our ranking of resorts. Last time, we ranked the value resorts. And this time, we're going to rank the moderate resorts. So, there's only five moderate resorts. So we'll start at number five, and I'm curious to see if Keith has the same one. I know, Keith, you've only been to two of the resorts. I have visited almost all of them. I've never uh, actually stayed at any of them. I have been there, walked around, and visited, and shopped, and ate, and whatnot. So, okay. so that's my qualifications for this episode. All right, so... At, with number five, I'll start it off. The number five for me, I'm going to go with the Fort Wilderness Campgrounds with what? the cabins at number five. You're so crazy. I think you're going to have you my baby. And <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I went with that was because it's, while it's really nice, you know, you get to sleep, I believe it's six people in the room. Um, it's a really good sized room. You can cook in there. You can bathe in there. You can get bitten by mosquitoes outside your room. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. And the reason why I really put it in the downside was that it's the multiple buses that it takes to get to your room. You know, so you're gonna get you're gonna get your your bus from say Epcot. And it's gonna drop you off in the front. Then you got to get onto another bus and transfer to your resort. So. That's the reason why I put it at number five. If they didn't have that, it would have been much higher up on my list. But with the campgrounds, if, if anybody has never been to the campgrounds, you should at least go to the campgrounds and visit and try to do something there, like go to the uh, the bonfire that they have, or the Chippendale mm -hmm. camp. Sorry, Chippendale campfire, which is a lot of fun. The kids are going to love that. They're going to they'll get a movie. They can. Uh, roast marshmallows they can make s'mores there's a guy there that's singing then after all that they have music and it's a lot of fun to go there and experience that and it's just a relaxed night out we did that on mother's day a couple years ago with uh, my wife and the kids so my wife enjoyed it the kids enjoyed it so you should try to do that 
But the reason, like I said before, the reason I put it at number five was because of the transportation. Other than that, I mean, it's still it's still a good resort. It's a relaxing resort. It's not the type of place where I think that you're going to go and go all commando necessarily just because of the transportation issue. It's just more of a, you know, let's go for a week, but maybe only do four days in the park type of thing. I'll talk about it more um, when it's on my list, but but uh, that's a valid point uh, with uh, your transportation. But can't you still, once you take that first bus um, at the front, <laughs> you can use the boats and everything else, like to the, the Magic Kingdom and all that stuff too, though? Yeah, there is a boat that will take you there, but in most cases, you're still going to have to take a bus up to where the boat's going to take you. Unless right. you're in one of the coaster cabins. Or the other thing that's nice is you can rent... Um, a golf cart for the week or whoever Mm -hmm. long you're going to stay there. I I want to say now it's around $70 a day or more for the golf cart. So yeah, it's not cheap, but it does make it a little bit more fun staying there. All right. So, um, at my five, it is, uh, born out of Springs. I know, um, that, um, not a good idea. That's wrong. It's being, um, updated and it's renovated and you know, that stuff now, but it's mainly, um, a, like, convention center and it is normally like constantly packed with uh convention goers which i have been to quite a few um conventions <laughs> albeit not there but company uh, retreats and conventions and and those things get crazy it's like the animals are free from the zoo so i would think that it would be like constantly busy um the waits for uh the buses would be extra long and i would just um, believe it or not but there is not much of a wait for the buses there because most of the people that are going to the conventions are say are at the resort staying there so you're gonna see a lot of people when you're staying there you're gonna see a lot of people walking around all dressed up and heading over to the convention center while right. you are in shorts walking away from the convention center so uh, mm-hmm. You don't you don't get a lot of people except later in the day that are on the buses. If you're paying a price to stay there, I think that you wouldn't want to deal with all the crowds at the restaurants, at the food courts, at, at those places too. So, with a bunch of other um, resorts to choose from, I put that one uh, at the bottom of my list. Yeah, and the two times that I've been there, I'm going to spend more time talking about it later, but the two times that I've been there, I have not seen a crowd at the food court. The only places I've seen a crowd is at the bar at mm-hmm. the end of the day. So it's not so bad, as bad as you think. So a lot of times the conventions, are they're getting food anyway. So there's a separate room or separate eating area for them to go to. So it's really not that bad. And in the morning, like I said, you're going to see them... You might see them getting coffee at the, the shop or something like that, but it's honestly, it's really not that bad. Alrighty. <laughs> All right. So number four for me, I was, this is kind of tough, is number four, I'm going to go with Port Orleans Riverside. I had, I had that too at four. Actually. Did you? Yeah, yeah I did. Uh, you know, I was kind of... That was a kind of tough one for me, but I, I put it at number four just because French Quarter is just a little bit more superior than mm. well, it is. It's a lot more superior than and then Riverside. Um, I don't it's not, Riverside is nice. I mean, it, it's it's really a nice resort. I think it's a great resort for for couples to go to. Right. And so is the French Quarter, but um, I don't. It's just there's a little. Sometimes it just feels a little bit too crowded at, at Riverside. It's a great resort, but sometimes it just feels a little bit too crowded. It feels like it's more crowded. Oh, so yeah, and stuff. And I'm not sure if it's, if it's smaller than the French Quarter is, but but it, it, it does, it has that feel to it. The French Quarter is usually first as far as the buses go and, and stuff like that, uh, especially um, if it's an off season. Uh, uh, it's where they don't, you know, tend to run as many buses. It seems like it's a further walk for transportation. It's probably um, a quieter one. I think that the families would probably choose the French Quarter more, but it just it doesn't feel as homey, I guess. I don't know I mean, I how do you like, put it. but I like the mansions. That's the ones that I like. I think that's the my preferred area 
would be mm-hmm. the mansions to to visit and stay at. The rest of it, I mean, it's it's still a nice resort, but uh, I don't know. It's just uh, it it feels it feels crowded. It's it's more spread out. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, I mean, it's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. It's it's still a great. Well, yeah, resort. I mean, there there is nothing wrong with any of these. It's just no. <laughs> well, it used to be was uh, for me the. Caribbean Beach was the resort for the longer for years. I just knocked and knocked and knocked, and I'll talk about it yeah. again later. Um, but it's much higher up on my list now after I visited it. Um, right. But since we talked about uh, Riverside, I'll go to my number three. And my number three is one that Keith just talked about a few minutes ago, and that's Coronado Springs. And uh, the reason I put that in there is just because the one thing you'll notice is that uh, the the resort can feel busy. But during the day, the main pool is probably like one of the least crowded pools a lot of the times, as opposed to other main pools at some of the resorts, just because so many people that are staying there are in the conventions. So there's a lot less people that you're fighting over chairs with at that resort. So that's good. It's Coronado kind of dropped a little bit in, in my feelings just because of the tower that they're putting in. I think that as of right now with the construction going on, it kind of takes away from the, the whole feel of the resort. But I mean, it is a great resort. It's very picturesque too. So especially at night, you get some you get some nice reflections going on, and it's it can be very quiet at night as well. A lot of the Disney resorts can be like that, but uh, it's a great resort to just walk around. Walk. It's if you want to do some exercise, you can walk. You can run, run or walk around the lake there, which is nice. And you know, Coronado's just, um, it's got a, Coronado's got a, a relaxed vibe to it. I didn't um, consider pools because you know me and pools, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but I mean, if you like pools, it's probably a excellent tip that the people are, are either occupied with the conventions or at the park. So right. um, a pool day there is probably really nice if you like to swim in big toilets so oh you gross thank you what's your number three <laughs> uh, my three um would be the, the cabins of fort wilderness i put them there um essentially for your value and as far when i say value um it's more that you can save on food if you choose to cook in your cabins it does fit six people so if you have you know a larger family or two smaller ones that you're splitting it with it's very nice it's quiet it's pretty secluded out there it can be a savings for you if you don't mind getting up and making breakfast or it's whatever and so, so that's why i put them at three you know the what stinks about the, what the cabins was that the cabins used to be really priced more as a moderate resort Mm -hmm. as opposed to the last couple years it's been closer to what a deluxe would be which is really a shame so I don't know why they even consider it a moderate resort anymore because of that but because you're you can it's essentially on average is $100 more per night than a, a moderate room upwards you know on average it's more than a hundred hundred and fifty dollars per night so that's a big jump that's that's in you're you're talking that you're in uh deluxe category but the difference is is that if you had two families i mean if you were let's just say two couples and or 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 you had four kids and and grandparents you don't want to be in the same room you're better right. off going with uh, the campgrounds as opposed to going to a one bedroom or two bedroom at a DVC resort, just because you'll save a lot more money. Or and it comes about the, it's almost about the same cost as it would be for a uh, a suite at like Art of Animation. So, right, yeah. All right. So next, uh, we're at number two, right? Yes. So number two for me is Caribbean Beach. Like a year ago, Caribbean Beach would have been number five on my list but after we did the travel agent tour last month man this thing jumped up big time because of all the renovations they've done to the yes. resort mm-hmm. the old port royale the you know the whole lobby area i mean that's 
beautiful, completely it is. reimaged hotel lobby. The the uh, the gift shop is is really well themed. It's very clean. It's it's modern looking, but yet it's got um, it fits in with the resort. So you know that's what I'm saying. It's clean. It just looks clean. It doesn't look run down or anything like that. The uh, food court has some great options for food. So that's incredible. The pool area there is beautiful, really well themed. It's uh, I would I would I would have thought they would have went a little bit bigger with that, but because they have other pools there, I guess they decided they didn't need to. But I mean, the pool area is great. There's a splash area for the kids. I mean, I was just so impressed with the whole pool area from the last time I saw that resort, and I was just amazed. And it's it's I I could my wife did it uh, would said that um, it's the moderate version of Old Key West or the newer version of Old Key West in a lot of ways. So she's like, she's hoping like Old Key West will update it to kind of come in more in line of how uh, Caribbean Beach looks. The uh, the bar there, the Banana Cabana bar is beautiful. That's the type of place I'd love to spend there at night by hanging out by the pool all day and then just sitting at the bar all night. Gotta love that. I love the idea of being able to walk to over to the gondolas because that's not far from the, uh, the lobby as well. So, I mean, this resort, man, this is like should be tops on so many people's lists. There's so many reasons to stay there. I mean, one of the biggest downside is, you know, the multiple bus stops inside the resort. But you get that at pretty much all the, the moderates. But um, at least you're not transferring buses, so that's a good thing. But, man, that, that, that lobby, everything they've done to the main part of that resort is gorgeous. I did um, also um, put that... At two, because everybody knows by now, it's like I'm a big, um, like pirate, beachy, like type of person. And we did, um, we stopped over there in February, and exactly that's what Sean said. That place is gorgeous now. Um, so we stopped at uh, Bastion's for dinner. The food is phenomenal, <laughs> it's pretty authentic flavors and spices, and, and it, it, it's just really, really well done. And, and it, it's just the theming for me. I just love it. Yeah, they did a great job on it. I didn't, I, from the pictures, the the pictures that were shown before they decided to renovate there, they were showing everybody. I really wasn't getting a, not, I don't want to say it's a good feeling, but I just couldn't really see mm-hmm. what was going to happen. But when I was on site looking at that, man, I was really, really impressed by it. It's, I would, if I was going to stay on site, I would totally stay at that resort. I think if we ever did, I choose to stay for um, like a moderate one. I think I would probably um, like choose that one, especially for like an anniversary um, like trip or something um, right. where if you're not like just at the parks all day. Right. All right. So that leads us to number one. Number one. I guess we both have the same one. It's going to be a uh, French. <laughs> yeah, order. we do. As we kind of, I touched on it, um, but it's really well done. The um, the theming uh, inside the rooms uh, is really well done, and kind of what pushed it over uh, Caribbean Beach was uh, the beignets, man. I mean, yeah, you, you can't go wrong with uh, like a plate with six freshly fried <laughs> beignets, man. I mean, that's just killer good. They are. The beignets are so good there. It's, uh, you know, what I love about the re- resort is is, I, I, I've been to New Orleans. I love New Orleans as a city. I, I, I think it's a great city. I love the architectural style of New Orleans and it brings it to the resort on definitely on a much smaller scale. And, but I love that. I love I love the feeling of, of feeling like I'm in, in New Orleans. You know, you get a little bit uh, of the, the French inspired architecture there. So it's fun. It's uh, it's very laid back. It's very uh, to me. I feel like French Quarter has more of a cozy feeling to it over Riverside, you know, right? It's just it's got that that true, just uh, authentic feel to it, right? The only thing I don't like about it is over in the food court is the the masks. <laughs> they they got rid of those, all right. They took those out. Yeah, yeah. They did, yeah. That, those kind of creeped me out. But uh, I, I, I love. I, I mean, the resort is great. It's uh, 
you know, you just you do get that feeling of, of being in New Orleans and in, in, and taking a step away from from Disney World. I think it's one of those resorts that pulls that off really well. Yeah, and I mean, you know, even if you don't stay there, go there and just hit the beignets and leave. And <laughs> and it's the, like the only resort that does um, parades for certain holidays for like. Uh, Mardi Gras. They have a parade, right. they have a Mardi Gras parade. You know, so that's cool that they yeah. do stuff like that. I like that. They do. Mm-hmm. Other, they have stuff for other things too. I can't remember what else it was, but the cast members make like floats and stuff. I yeah. mean, it's 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 just it, it's really cool. Yeah, it it's is. a fun um, uh, resort to be at. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for for moderates. There we so we've concluded. Um, number five for me was the cabins. Four was Riverside. Three was Coronado. Two was uh, Caribbean Beach. And number one was French Quarter. I had Coronado Springs, us Riverside, the cabins, Caribbean Beach, and the French Quarter as my top five. All right. So if you were booking a trip tomorrow, where would you stay at? It? Which one are you choosing? Um. Uh, Caribbean Beach. Yeah, that's what I would choose to. I, I do like Coronado Springs a lot. Um, you know, I, I've been there. I'm I'm familiar with the resort. I love the grounds. The thing with like me is like I don't mind walking to get to my room as well. Right. So it's a little bit further from the lobby. Uh, but there are multiple stops in the resort. But I usually always tend to go to the lobby anyway. Uh, but I, you know, it doesn't bother me that I'm walking a little bit. It's I'm I like getting that exercise, especially in the cooler weather months when we're coming from the north and it's like three degrees out and you get down there and you can wear shorts man i'll walk i'll walk 500 yeah. miles you know it doesn't bother me well yeah i mean it, it's nice to not be in the frigid north so yep. <laughs> doesn't matter all right so i think that's it everybody out there you know you can send us your opinions if you'd like uh, you can tell us we're wrong. I'm sure um, Apple Man Brian is going to tell us that I was wrong and that it should have been number one for the uh, the cabins. But you know, not all of us like to hang out in dirt. So, <laughs> oh, well, hard to play in dirt sometimes. sometimes. But not to you know hang out in dirt no. for too long anyway. Exactly. All right, so that's going to do it for this week. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, Kingdom Strollers. Get your premium stroller and crib rentals at kingdomstrollers.com. Let the vacation experts at mousepros.com help plan your next perfect Disney vacation. Don't forget to check out the store at redbubble.com slash Tiki Talk Podcast. You can connect with, yeah, connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook and the channel Tiki Talk, Instagram and Twitter at Tiki Talk Podcast. You can leave us a message on the Tiki Talk hotline. That's 256-4MY-TIKI, 256-469-8454. If you enjoy the show, please take the time and rate us on iTunes. And you can find me on Twitter at 1 Minute Disney Dream. That's 1-M-I-N Disney Dream, MouseWorldVacations.com, and MousePros.com. And you can find me um, on Instagram and Twitter um, at Dole Whip Daily. And you can find Sassy Steve at uh, Disney Diary, <laughs> Disney'sDiary.com. Check it out for your Disney news, reviews, and whatevs. Uh, whatevs. Whoa. I don't know why that happened. I don't either. <laughs> but your TV just popped on for some reason. I don't know. That's it. Alan, take it away. Thanks for listening this week. For Sean and Keith, I'm Alan. And this has been Enchanted Tiki Talk. Aloha. Enchanted Tiki Talk has been brought to you by MousePros.com. Let us plan your perfect Disney vacation. And by KingdomStrollers.com for all your premium stroller and crib rental needs. For all of us here, I'm David Benter. Thanks for listening to Enchanted Tiki Talk.